Do you guys have any idea? And I don't want. I'm not asking who you're going to vote for. Do you know who you want to be president? <laughs> I mean, if you could make it happen. I tell you what. <laughs> I honestly, this has been my running joke now. There's part of me that thinks Bernie Sanders will be the best option purely because I don't think he will make it through four years alive. Okay. I am serious. You because of his age? <laughs> yes. Okay, well, I mean, that, I no, know listen. he's in great health, but you know what? <laughs> Every president that comes the through there yeah. looks Look like they have health. aged okay, 20 now here's, years in this is an interesting And Bernie question. Sanders doesn't have 20 more years. Okay, here's an interesting question. Uh, every debate, he gets asked about his age and his health. Hillary Clinton, if elected, will be the second oldest president ever elected to the Oval Office. Mm -hmm. She's only three years younger than he is. Why does she get a pass on the age and health question, but yet Bernie gets tagged with it? Botox. Okay. Well, she's, she's a woman. She's a woman. You can't yeah. ask a woman how old she is. Even if she wants to be president of the United process. States of America? Yeah. I, I mean, is your glass ceiling that that right. sensitive? I, I mean, why is it? I mean, is that simple? I mean, you're the only other guy here. Yeah. That we were taught from a young age, you don't ask a lady how old she is. <laughs> it is. is. Yeah. I mean, what, no matter what we say, we try to move past that. There's, you know, I'm, I'm a guy. I was raised a certain way. I Try, you know, I try to be respectful to women. All right. That's one of the ways in which I try to be respectful to women. All right, so at the top end, we worry about Bernie not making it through because of his age. The bottom end, we say, yeah, Rubio's too young, too yeah. inexperienced. Well, and Bernie, that same age question was asked of McCain when he ran in 2000. Sure and you're also talking about a guy who survived torture for years in, in the war. So, I mean... I mean, that age question is not necessarily new, but... No, it, it goes back to Jimmy Carter yeah. and Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. Uh, who had the best answer ever uh, when, when Jimmy Carter brought that up in a debate. He said, well, I'm not going to hold your inexperience against you, so don't hold my experience against me, mm -hmm. You know, which kind of diffused the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Do you know who you want to be in the Oval Office? I do. I do. I don't want to say, but no, I No, 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 I, I get that. And, and do you think that will turn out? Or, I don't, okay. unfortunately. Right. I don't. I wish, because in my opinion, it's somebody that we have talked about that I think could actually make things happen yeah but i don't think that person will have a chance mm -hmm. because of the light being so drastic one side or the other and, and compromise mm -hmm. is seen as a weakness Correct. right Correct. kyle do you I know mean, i pretty much already said earlier that rubio would be my choice as, a, as it was now but um i and, and truth be told i'm not really truly enamored with anybody this time around mm -hmm. um so he's the lesser of the I, evils I think, for you yeah i think so and I, I don't know if it'd be so so much as that i just you know I just haven't caught on with him as much as I have, you know, in the past, I've, you know, this is probably the candidate I'm going to vote for. I'm going to vote for that person. But this time around, you know, I, I'm just not as enamored with, with anybody, to be honest. You have a sense of your, you know, you're watching this stage or either stage and, uh, and you're thinking this country has 300 plus million yes. people. And, and this, this, this is, is our choice. Totally yeah. And right. that to yeah. some degree that, yeah. that's said usually each time, but I think even, I think, because Even more now, so now? But I think mm -hmm. by now, on both sides, there are at least one or two people. And there, to some degree, it's true on the Democratic side because it's either going to be Hillary or Bernie. Right. But on the other side, there's nobody's, that's, right. nobody has grasped it Is yet. that because it's gotten so ugly that we're pushing really good people out of politics? Yes, yes. absolutely. I, I think so. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do you know who you want pr the president to be? I do. Okay. And is there any chance of that happening? No. Okay. <laughs> so, so there's a little disillusionment. All right. One last question on the process. You know, we're taping this now. We're still three weeks out. You know, four weeks out of the Illinois primary. Mm -hmm. More likely than not, you're not going to get a say in what happens in this primary because it's going to be decided by the time it right. gets right. here. Who gave Iowa and New Hampshire That's and South Carolina right. all this power? Where Hillary Clinton wins on a coin toss. You know, when the, when the numbers look like a city council race, you know, as far as the actual number of people of voting, do you does it make any sense to you as a millennial that we gave so much power to these three tiny little populations? No, absolutely not. I mean, it, I think most of my generation doesn't even understand the primaries. Right. Well, caucuses, I, you know, right. that Aunt Gert's yes. rhubarb might sway your vote from one candidate to another, right. or they, they have to do a, a coin toss, yeah, if we're crying out right. loud. Why they're on different days? Yeah. Why is the entire country voting on a different day? Then what impact do we have if we're one of the leader states? You I feel agree. the same way? I do, and I don't know. I watch The Good Wife. I love The Good Wife. <laughs> and they had an episode about the Iowa caucus, and I was dying laughing because, you know, they, yeah. they go into it and they think, okay, he's going to get it. He's going to get it. And then he places, I don't know, fourth or fifth. And so, but it is because when you watched 
the Iowa caucus this year, you're thinking, okay, this is where it really landed. Really? This is where the candidates right. ended up. Kyle? And I'd even take what you said about this state in particular one step further, that it would be decided on who ultimately it's going to vote for because we've been such a heavy Democratic nom- you know, nomination of a candidate state that we decide in. So I particularly feel like my, my vote, at least for president, um, well, really is, you know isn't going to go we, as But we do far. live in a diverse community. Yeah, That's you know, true. I, I can't yes. talk about the state, but George W. Bush won Macon County by That's double true. digits. Yeah. Barack Obama won Macon County by double digits. That's true. You know, I mean, so it does depend but on the, the message of the, day, of the person. You know, it depends on what the, who the state picks, and we know with Chicago which way they're probably going to go, which I think Illinois should really be an important state in this whole process mm-hmm, because you have – diametrically opposed geographics or demographics i'm sorry between chicago and downstate and, illinois so you're reaching a lot of will, different people and will millennials one figure state? that out that the power does rest with you you know if you if the parties take these votes for granted right i, I mean that when we quit identifying as republicans or democrats and vote for people those powers lose their part I mean, they 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 have nothing to bring they want iowa and new hampshire because they can control it they can get their people in if they had to go sell it to 50 different states all on the same day the, the democrats don't want that the republicans don't want that because they want to control the process our, our governor is said many times and something that resonates with me it's time for the politicians to quit choosing the voters and the voters to choose the politicians does that ring true with you oh absolutely now whether that's going to be a reality you know nobody knows but it's definitely a big issue all right well, last question we're going to wrap it up and i want to thank kyle and caitlin and sujin and christina for being here uh are you pessimistic or optimistic about our future as a country I, would I like mean, if you had to just, you know, 49%, 50%, 51%. I would like to say I'm an extreme optimist. I always think, you know, there's sunshine and rainbows on the other side of the hill. But unfortunately, it's very scary, especially as a mother, as, you know, Christina knows, it's very scary the world that we are raising these children in and the path that we are setting them on. And in that sense, it is very pessimistic about the way that we as millennials or we as the upcoming, you know, generations are teaching our younger people Kyle I would say I'm actually very optimistic because I think there is the world in which we're growing up in and there's the world in which the media portrays that we're growing up in and I think especially you look at how China the weakness of China uh, the U.S. I think is still going to be the leader of the world going forward and I, I don't I don't look at China as much of a threat to the U.S. as maybe other people have had here recently and I think you can just look at their currency compared to the U.S. currency and how that's flip flop. So, um, looking at it kind of economically, mm-hmm. I am very optimistic for the future, and I'll continue to be because, you know, I think that in this country you can make things happen for you more so than you can anywhere else in the world. That's why people come across our borders to try to make that happen for them, and some of them will, and some of them won't. But I think as long as we portray this as a place of opportunity. There will be some opportunity for people, and that's why people will continue to come here. Christina? Wait, now I want to change my answer. <laughs> I know, right? Some millennials are easily persuaded. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be optimistic. I do. So I'm trying to not see the negative. I'm trying to see the positive in both who we believe would be the the candidates. I'm trying to see the positives in both of them. So I'm going to say optimistic. All right, Caitlin? Yeah, I'm going to agree with Kyle, and I'm going to go with optimistic. I think my generation gets a lot of flack about uh, being educated, and they like to put out our stupid Facebook posts all the time. On so, you know. <laughs> but when it comes down to it, I think most of my friends are pretty educated. I think most of them know who the candidates are, what they stand for, and what they want. So I'm optimistic that mm-hmm. that'll carry us forward. All right. It's the millennials on this year's presidential election process on Naticator.com.